Welcome to Implausible Nature, home of Black Templar's competitive play. Today we're going to be talking about all of the changes that are occurring in the game, and specifically the Space Marines. So we're going to start off with the biggest elephant in the room, the two wounds on normal old guard Space Marines. So I was just talking with Alex just a moment ago, and I'm a little bit uh, on the fence on this one. So I like that my army of choice is getting buffed, but it feels a little weird to me, um, primarily due to our Primaris model line and the fluff and stuff that goes around with those guys. So here we are, we have our old Space Marines. Yeah, they're really tough, you know, so the two wounds reflect that really nicely. But GW instituted these bigger, stronger, faster, more resilient Marines in the Primaris they're supposed to be better in every single way, and now we have the old guard that are basically on the same footing with them, with the exception of that one attack. So for me, it just feels really weird. I don't know what you feel, Alex, on that, but it just I feel like it's a lost opportunity. Maybe they're going to be opening the door for an extra toughness in there for Primaris, but we'll, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But for me, it's just weird. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird for me too. I am uh, like you said, I'm happy that my older marine models are getting buffed, but at the same time like I had kind of already sort of accepted that old marines are not as good as they once were and are not were not at the time going to be a competitive choice anymore. And uh, as hard as it was for me to let go, of a unit like my crusader squads and some of these older units with a few exceptions like vanguard vets and devastators and things like that uh, i had kind of moved on and been like okay i've got a lot of primaris guys now i love the models they're gorgeous they're what marines should look like in my opinion they're they're as as big as a marine should be they're imposing they're great looking models so now all of a sudden it's like well hey the old marines are are much better now than they were previously. That was one of the biggest detriments to them was that second wound for only a few points more. So um, I, I think, I don't know if your basic Marine units are still going to see a ton of tabletop play with this. Um, there's there's a lot to unpack here. You know, I think for two points more, an Intercessor is still a better value than a Tactical Marine because you get a better bolt gun and you get an extra attack, which for an army like us, we want to be in close combat. So those extra attacks matter, especially with our super doctrine, uh, those hitting on sixes and the things that we have like Grimaldus uh, getting those extra attacks. You need a volume of attacks for that. So I think our veteran units are instantly top tier. Vanguard vets were already good. They're amazing now. Even if they're going to be three points more per model, which is another 30 points that I have to shave out of my list. But like a, even like a unit like uh, Stern Guard, which now not only are, are good because of they're going to be durable, but with the buff to Flamers that uh, are moving to 12 inches and Stern Guard can take two Heavy Flamers in a squad, they suddenly, two of the, like uh, two Heavy Flamers in a Stern Guard squad in a drop pod now suddenly... Sounds really fun. So there's just a lot to unpack here. It's hard to digest it all at once. Yeah, and, and, and let's not talk about the, the 30 points. That's yeah. a little depressing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Most of us have already just rebalanced yeah. all of our lists. Ninth edition's yeah. come out. And I won't lie, I'm getting a little bit of list fatigue here. You know, GW keeps on, you know, strategically or not, having these leaks come out and it's like ah oh. making our lists smaller it's it's hard like i want to take big flashy close combat units and i want to run a bunch of marines and it's just getting harder and harder with not being able to fit everything i want to in the list i remember when ninth initially talked about the detachments and things like that and how they were going to cost command points and the only one that would get refunded was your warlords detachment and i'm like well man I had been used to running four HQ or, or sometimes five. And I really liked the hero hammer aspect of that. And I'm like, now I'm going to be limited to three. And I realized after I started building lists that I barely have enough points for three and get all the other units that I need in the list. 
So yeah, it's it's getting harder. It's going to be harder and harder because the models are going to go up. All the weapons are getting uh, changed or buffed. Uh, it seems like a lot of them are, and um, there may be points increases with those. Thunder hammers. Thunder hammers just went to four damage. I don't know why. Um, that's a weird change to me. I'm not complaining, I guess, but I mean, if they go up any more, much more than they already are, they're already 15 points per per swing, which is tough to swallow when you want several of them. Yeah. I mean, when you're going against inventory with a thunder hammer with three damage, that's pretty much all you're really going to need with it. Yeah. So it looks like they're trying to design it to be cross-functional with vehicles. But, you know, they were already good at that anyway. Yeah, because vehicles don't tend to have invulnerable saves. So, you know, you smash a vehicle with four or five thunder hammer attacks, it's probably going to die. Uh, or take a hefty amount of damage because it's it's at best going to be saving on a six up unless it's a land raider. So really, my my thoughts behind this when we first saw the Vanguard Veterans was the first unit that got leaked with uh, two wounds on it. Yeah. yeah. My opinion was if they kept the two wounds on the Veteran squads, I would have been happy with that. Um, you know, the more grizzled warriors in each chapter you know you theoretically hey they've lasted that long you they've lived hundreds of years they probably are the tougher ones and then they just chopped it to yeah i I think it was a waste i I think there was a good opportunity to both have you know a good fluff perspective behind it as well Mm -hmm. as you know on the tabletop you know hey it's we're not over buffing space marines because everyone's like oh it's Games Workshop loves Space Marines, and we're always the first ones to get the buffs, always the first ones to get the codexes, you know. Don't get me wrong, I love getting buffed, you know, I like to win, but I don't want to be, like, clubbing baby seals either. Right, and the other thing, too, is uh, Marines are going to become even more popular, if that's even possible, than they already are now, so the odds of you facing Marine versus Marine are going to increase. Um, The other thing that... um, uh, when I first saw the veterans, and then they came out with, uh, I forget what the next data sheet was. It might have been the command squad one that we saw that had veterans in it. Uh, and it was like, okay, it's it's going to be veterans that are getting an extra wound. My first initial thought was, this is how GW is going to phase out, start phasing out old Marines. Is they're going to go with the one wound tactical squad, you know, basic unit ones. And those are going to be the first ones to go. Because, you know, they could advance the timeline like another 200 years and all that's left of the, you know, the old Marines, the firstborn, as people call them, is the grizzled old veterans, the specialist veteran units, you know. Um, But obviously that wasn't going to be the case. Um, GW has definitely breathed new life into even your basic tactical or crusader squad so they've said that tacticals are going up to 18 points per model so based on that i would assume that all other one wound models will get a three point increase something that's interesting to me is a stern guard squad then becomes the same price as a intercessor squad uh, except the stern guard squad has a better bolt gun and access to a bunch of different combi and special weapons and heavy flamers and things like that so i don't know about you but i think stern guard actually may even get a hike beyond that because of all that extra access stuff and i'm hoping that something like that does not travel over to vanguard veterans yeah right now you know those specialist units might see a little bit more of a increase like you mentioned i i'm really crossing my fingers that the vanguard veterans don't get hit with that that points increase too hefty yeah, three is going to be tough to swallow enough as it are, as it is. Yeah, but they do get access to the storm shields, which will be nice, uh, especially because it will be the small arms fire that will bring them down over anything else. You know, I was thinking about this. Well, you know, in previous times when I'd faced against in eighth edition and my first game in ninth edition, my first game in ninth edition, they got shot with some stalker bolt rifles, and you know, my opponent is like, okay, well. They're AP minus two, and they're two damage. And I'm like, I don't care if they're two damage. I'm a one-wound model. 
It doesn't matter. Your extra damage is wasted. This is like my thought process. And, and I was like, man, well, that's going to matter now. It's going to kill the whole model. And the other part of me is like, well, you know, it was going to kill the whole model anyway before. So that's not that much of a difference. But those regular bolt guns, those flamer hits, those other one damage things, assault cannons are going to now require double the amount of shots to take down a single model. So I think a unit like Vanguard Vets is going to be only improved by it as long as they don't go to go up too much in points you mentioned it before they were they were great before i have a specific loadout that i use and i think yep. alex uses this similar, i got it from you <laughs> uh, loadout <laughs> so i use four thunder hammer storm shield veterans and then i take three storm shield chainsword and then i finish off with three dual wielding chainsword so i have some chaff to lose units but i still have way to fire on that and i have differing weapons there yeah to basically yeah. kill anything that i need yep they can clear horde chaff units they can kill vehicles they can kill characters and monsters and stuff like that and they're they're very durable yep they're very durable uh when we when they still had the three plus plus which i guess technically they they still do although my first game of ninth um i talked about it with my opponent and i said how do you want to we know this change is coming how do you want to handle this um and we decided that uh he was like let's just play it with the new rule and i'm like okay that's fine you know i'll, I'll try it out and it was actually great uh doing it that way but when back in eighth edition played against one of my friends and he plays tyranids and he always runs the swarm lord and that thing is mean it is hard to kill in close combat it's got a three plus and vulnerable save a bajillion wounds it hits hard, and that that squad of Vanguard vets took out it and a Carnifex in one combat. Um, it was a couple rounds of combat, but they they tied them up, and I kept making my invulnerable saves, and he, he they killed it. So they're a tough, durable unit. In my most recent game, in my first game of ninth, when they had the two plus four plus uh, storm shields, we tested it out. And I'm glad that I had the, the two plus because they got shot. He used clearance protocols uh, with his Crimson Fists and hurled 31 uh, frag grenade shots at me because I had more than six models. Of those 31, I lost two models because I made my two plus armor saves on my Storm Shield guys. It, it definitely helps. It helps a lot. They're going to still be a really great unit to take. I'm intrigued by Stern Guard. Uh, I don't know, but how do you feel about that? So in 8th edition, there was quite a few different lists that I utilized uh, Stern Guard in. And I kind of wavered between uh, company veterans and Stern Guard throughout 8th for that reason. I like the additional AP that Stern Guard are able to give you as opposed to the Storm Bolters. And obviously, the Storm Guard have a lot of options for you. So you did mention that you could do the flamer option, the grab guns, you know, combi weapons, that type of thing. So it gives you a nice toolbox to use. As far as that goes, um, I probably still would opt for my company vets, though. I'm a little partial, partially because of the change of the lookout, sir. Uh, the company vets still have an option for us to yeah that's true intercept yeah, that's those true. wounds and save yeah. those wounds especially with a two wound model yeah. so now if they're intercepting you get hit by something that's medium to high damage and your squad isn't going to necessarily get wiped from intercepting the hit you may lose one or two models instead depending on how well you roll your saves uh, i think stern guard i have always been at least in eighth edition ever since they changed them from having their special ammo or whatever access to just being a bolter uh, a special bolter and not getting it on combi weapons um, since that time i have always been a proponent of if you're going to take stern guard run them just naked plain because you the whole point of them is that bolter. And if you're taking a combi weapon, then you might as well run company vets who have other benefits because they can take a chainsword with that combi weapon or a power weapon with that combi weapon. Whereas the Stern Guard have that special bolter. But I think now with the change to the heavy flamers, I think that's something I want to try. Put them in a drop pod, maybe alongside some company veterans, and just have a storm of fire uh, coming out on turn one with grav devs taking out a bunch of a uh, bunch of stuff too so on that front you know you consider a stern guard unit you know armed with those heavy boulders or the heavy flamers there and the standard 
boulders, you can compare them to 8th edition Invictors and how good they were in that first initial turn, and you're a similar output on those weapons. Um, obviously now the Invictor is going to get that Strength 6 on the Incentium Canyon, so uh, it's going to be a little bit better there. But one thing I do want to point out about these changes with the two wounds that really should be noted, you know, the big difference between the Primaris in them, because I know that a lot of players are, are really wanting an excuse to use those old guard. One of the biggest things that are in our armies right now that we desperately need to make our armies function is concealed position. We do not get that with our old guard. Yeah. You get the scout units. Yeah. And they are not getting yeah. buffed. No. Which hopefully they won't go up in points either because 14 point scout models is already hard enough to stomach. They may be okay as a, I, I need another troop unit and I only have this amount of points. They will definitely be the cheapest troop choice in the codex or maybe cheaper models to add on. I don't even know if we want to add them onto Crusader squads as bad as that sounds because you're paying four points less, but you get a worse save and one wound. So that's a tough choice. So you, you really have to weigh it. You know, ultimately, if you want to get that first turn or second turn strike that you, you really need for that, that uh, close combat uh, army, and we touched on that in a previous video here, but it's, you really are stuck with the primaries getting that concealed carry, or else you're going to be forking out for a draw pod. Yeah. Um, and then you got to throw on another 68 points on, onto that unit. You know, is yeah. it worth it? So, well, and if you're if you're taking a drop pod, you you want character support up there too. Somebody like Helbrecht to drop in and give you those re rolls, especially if you're taking grab devastators. You 100% want Helbrecht there because that gives you you're going to be hitting on fours, and that gives you a 75% chance to hit with those shots. Uh, well, I take that back. Three of the grabs will hit on fours. You can use the sergeant to make the fourth one hit on threes but you want as many hits as possible because then you're going to get those re-rolls to wound with the stratagem uh, which is why you're taking them speaking of which that unit is going to be scary with two wounds they're going to be way harder to shift and they may actually survive more than one turn <laughs> <laughs> two youth units die yep so you asked me a couple hours ago what would be the default weaponry on company vets, in my opinion, storm bolters or the options of the new change to flamers being the 12 inches. I had mentioned that I would still go with the storm bolters, and my reason for that is they're more versatile. So ideally, you know, you want to drop in your opponent's face and flame them or shoot them and then charge in, right? That's That's the goal. Yeah. But there might be a situation in your mission or your opponent, maybe they've castled up really well, that maybe you just want to drop those guys on an objective and hold that objective. Yeah. When you, you when you have those flamers on there, you basically are wasting that range yep. or those weapons that whole time. Like you said, if you end up needing to drop them, because the grav cannons have a 24-inch range, and they don't need to be 9 inches away. They can be 24 inches away and just be just as effective. So if you end up needing to put that pod somewhere on an objective further away from your opponent, you're now wasting the flamer completely. And I, and I think having the storm bolters, uh, like you said, is still, you're going to be able to cover more of the board with more shots. Something else there, strength five power swords. I'm so excited about that. I can't tell you how excited I am about that because we're Templars. Swords are kind of our thing, and I love swords. I love the aesthetic of them, and for a long, long time, they were not the best weapon to take. And, I mean, axes are still going to be good. They're going to be plus two strength, so with Helberg, they'll be plus, they'll be strength seven, which is definitely good, so they will still be a viable option. But just being able to have a sword that wounds better, and it's basically a good good weapon now. Strength 6 in 8th edition was pretty potato as far as usability. There wasn't a ton of uses for something that's strength 6. Strength 5 was really the bigger breakpoint. I think that's changing. GW has released, and we talked about this in a previous video, uh, GW has released a bunch of Toughness 5 Space Marine units. They've re just released a bunch of Toughness 5 and 6 new Necron units. 
and they've the some of the new data sheets that have come out for Necrons, Immortals and Death Marks are going to tough five. And Immortals are troops choices. You're going to see a lot more Immortals. If you play against Necrons, you're going to see a lot more Immortals, even more so than you were before. Because tough five with a three plus save is tough to shift. So strength six, I think, is going to become more, more important than it was in eighth. What do you think? I, I definitely agree with that. You know, those those new models that are going to be more important. It's there's a lot of new units that are coming out. Then any additional pip of strength that really is going to be important. It gives you more ability to all comers your list. You never know who you're going to be playing. You know, in a tournament tournament setting. You know, if you're just playing one one person, then obviously you know you can dictate. You know, the weapons that are used, but I don't build my list that way. I build my list knowing no, I don't know who my opponent is. It could be anybody, and and just having that additional strength is kind of huge. You know, you, you, it gets you in the range of where you can impact your monsters, you can impact vehicles, uh, what have you. You know, it gives you a, just additional things on the, the board that you can deal with other stuff. You know, it, I don't feel like it's a waste having that. And then you know, for some reason, if Helbrick, if Helbrick dies, they're still he's strength not five. Able to give you that strength. Exactly. They're still strength five. Yeah. So you know, yeah. s- snipers are still a thing. They are definitely still a thing, and characters are not uh, nearly as well protected as they used to be. So that's definitely something. Fortunately for me, my play group does not run a ton of snipers, so I don't routinely have to deal with it, but it is something that uh, people run snipers. They run eliminators. The, the Necron snipers just got much better. People like snipers because characters are important. So you're going to see, especially in a tournament, you're going to see snipers. So it's more important than ever to have that extra strength because somebody's going to take Helbrick out because he's he's good. He provides a lot of buffs. Yeah. So now that we kind of talked a little bit about the changes that are going in, most of you guys have seen the data sheets and Units that I I foresee being still competitive. So I know there's a lot of excitement about the two wounds for all of the old guard space marines, but I don't see Crusader squads making a comeback. I know there was a lot of excitement about that. Very rare in a list. I I think they might see some play, but I I still think that their intercessors are the way to go. Warrior and cursors. Warrior and cursors, yeah. Other big ones I do think, however, that we will be seeing is Devastator squads, Mm -hmm. specifically with Grav. I don't really see any of those other options. Not for us, anyway. Yeah. I mean, heavy bolters with that that buff to the two damages is great, but, you know, we're really not tooled to shoot in this edition. You know, previous edition, sure, but not this one. Our, Our chapter tactics are such that we want to advance, we want to charge, and we want to get those attacks to get those free auto wounds. So Grav is applicable to us because they are close quarters by your power that you can also team in a drop pod those combat veterans with them. And you could get Hellbrick in there. So you get those, you're, he's buffing both your close combat portion and your range portion. So you can get a really deadly first turn strike using that combo. Um, so that's why I would suggest those ones. Not to mention, they also got a, a really discounted price. 125, or I'm sorry, 123 points with the, the skull, I believe, is what they're currently at. So that's a bargain for the yeah. amount of damage that those guys yeah. can do. And then you, you got your, your Terminators out there, too. That's another thing that we, we talked about in a previous video. So, you know, they're getting bumped up to three wounds. You know, technically, they're still old guard Marines, but those are going to start seeing some less, too the assault terminators or the tactical terminators so we have some options again so the the sky is looking bluer every day definitely so i think uh that'll do it for this video sorry it was kind of a rambling type of video we're just sort of having a conversation i think uh, there was a a lot to unpack a lot to think about so we decided to not really just have a structure and just kind of just have a conversation about it so i hope you guys enjoyed it Uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and please subscribe so you can get notified on all of our new content and we'll see you next time (laughs) 